Hi, my name is Brian Howard, and I am the Executive Director of the Spelman Museum of Stamps and Postal History on the Regis College campus in Weston. Welcome to our update for April 2024. March was one of the museum's most successful months in recent memory. Our inaugural postcard sale and show brought in over 200 visitors and was featured in the Boston Globe. Historical reenactor Cheryl Fay's return as Queen Elizabeth played to a packed house. Museum representatives also appeared on WBZ Radio, and a segment was taped for airing on WCVB Boston's morning show. An appeal to our lapsed members dating back to 2021 yielded over 30 membership renewals, approximately a 10% increase in our roles. The museum's new gallery exhibit, titled Gems from the Vault, is now open. GEMS features 192 frames across eight exhibit cases showing rare and interesting stamps from our United States, worldwide, and topical collections. Among the GEMS are the earliest U.S.-issued stamps from 1847, a rare collection of postal history material from Great Britain, and the permanent collection of Charles Sevret, who donated the cases in this gallery. GEMS from the Vault will be on long-term exhibit, with occasional updates to its content. The museum is pleased to be a part of the greater Weston community. Toward that end, we have pursued active partnerships with local entities, including the town government, our friends at Regis College, on whose campus we exist, and of course the Weston Media Center. We are strengthening our ties to these and other organizations. A recent example is the extension, for the first time, of free museum admission to all Regis College students, staff, and faculty. The Spelman Museum shares the common goal with other regional nonprofits of improving life for everyone who lives or works in Weston and the greater Metro West region. At the Spelman, we are fascinated by the various ways goods have been delivered over the years via the U.S. mail. Today's vintage artifact is this fascinating parcel post mailing egg crate. This particular piece dates back to the 1920s. More than 100 years ago, this kind of carrier was the preferred method to deliver eggs from farms to stores and restaurants throughout New England. A small farmer may have kept 40 to 50 hens producing three to four dozen eggs each day. This particular tray held up to three dozen eggs, making it quite spacious and unique. You can see the carefully crafted compartments with crumpled tissue paper that securely cradled each and every egg, protecting them from rolling or cracking. Special separations within the crate look very much like modern egg cartons, the ones we use today, and they work the same way to keep eggs safe during transit. A small window on top held the address and postage for the letter carrier. Certainly, the postal worker of the 1920s must have had a very different kind of pouch and vehicle to accommodate all of these unique deliveries. Stop by the Spellman to see this actual artifact among many others that we have. We're closing today with the Spelman Museum's curator, Nancy Meyer. Nancy is originally from New York City. She is a Duke University graduate and a retired software engineer. Nancy, welcome to the update. Thank you. It's so, a pleasure. so how, uh, how did you get involved in stamp collecting? Well, my father was a collector and he saw me trying to take stamps off of an envelope and he was very excited because his son was, my brother wasn't interested. And so that was history. We got involved in stamp collecting together. I've collected ever since. Now, um, I started my career as a museum curator, so I'm familiar with what that, that role entails, but could you describe uh, a bit your role at the, at the Spelman Museum as the curator and, uh, and what a typical day would look like? Uh, what I do normally is I work in the vault a significant part of the day. I'm working on organizing collections, getting material ready for talks and exhibits, um, mounting and, and stabilizing material. I also spend a certain amount of time looking for things that will fit into an exhibit. Um, I also am the volunteer coordinator right now because I've actually been a volunteer mm -hmm. and I work organizing volunteers, finding work that's appropriate to their skill letter, level and I train people. It's a pretty busy day. I also work from home. I do a certain amount of the research and write up from home as well. Okay, and uh, I see you've brought a, a few items with you, uh, examples of uh, the types of things that you work with? Yes, um, I'm not sure whether this will show or not. These are very rare. Um, at the end of World War II, uh, one actually, I apologize, um, the white Russians lost the war. And 
they ended up with General Wrangel getting them into Turkey. And Turkey wasn't very eager to accept them as refugees, so they actually put up a plague flag and everybody ran away and they actually unloaded all their refugees. And they stayed in Turkey after a while and the camps would send each other letters. These are overprinted Russian stamps. This is an actual cover, that's what we call envelopes. And they're very, very rare. Um, eventually, the uh, Russians integrated pretty well into the Turkish uh, society. They wrote at one point a book called Don't Forget Me, My Russia, and they wrote it in Turkish. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is stamps. We are in the process of putting up an Icelandic collection for an exhibit, which will be available this spring. Um, one of the things that's interesting about Iceland is they didn't have any airmail service, which considering their infrastructure or lack thereof of, of some of the roads was a surprise. What happened is that they finally printed some in 1928. What they did is they took some any old definitives, they overprinted them. That's what these two stamps are on top. And they decided to take off borrowing a German Lufthansa plane. Sadly, they crashed before they reached Reykjavik, and they had to be towed into the harbor with a fishing boat. Everybody mm -hmm. survived, all the covers that were on it, all the envelopes, most of which philatelic, survived, but this is why Iceland didn't have airmail for a while. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting that you can take, uh, as the curator, that you can take uh, our collections and, and tell these stories about not only uh, uh, American, but also worldwide history and, and, and delve into all sorts of different aspects of, of the human experience through stamps. And it's important that we have people like yourself uh, coming there who are knowledgeable of the collections and able to not only preserve the materials themselves, but also to preserve the, the stories that go along with them. Thank so. you. I think it's the stories, the human stories that go with them that make this so much fun. Um, I found letters from sisters saying, I haven't heard from you, brother. She sent it to London. Um, if you think back to 1825 when this letter was sent, there was no 911. You couldn't do a wellness check. Mm -hmm. It's a very poignant letter. There's a lot of human stories that go with this. It's just not pieces of paper. It's part of human history. Yeah. And that, I think, is the, is the crux of the appeal of the, the Spellman Museum. And, it, it takes people like yourself to, to bring those stories to light. So thank you for the, the work that you're doing. You're very welcome. It's a privilege. Thanks. That's it for the April update. We at the Spellman Museum thank you for your interest, and we're looking forward to seeing you this spring.